Uh, in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this regular meeting of the Board Adjustment has been provided. Mr. Betterbid. Ms. Gramman. Here. Mr. Johnson. Mr. McCracken. Here. Mr. Rich. Here. Mr. Shepard. Here. Mr. Caldwell. Mr. Rosenthal. Mr. Reese. Ms. Bergallo. Here. Chairman Thomas. Here. Well, I shouldn't really say chairman yet because you're not chairman. <laughs> All right, uh, our attorney has uh, done the oath of office for our two returning of the four. Mr. McCracken and Mr. Thomas were both reappointed by the uh, Township Council for welcome back for your umpteenth years. Uh, the next order of business is the nomination and selection of the, of the chair. Uh, do we have a motion for, for chair? Yeah, I nominate Bob Thomas. Move. Second. Any further nominations? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. All right. Thank, thanks again for the, the uh, honor and the privilege. I appreciate it. I hope to do well by you. Uh, take nominations for vice chair. I move uh, Laura Garman for vice chair. Second. Any further nominations? Close. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Close. And uh, all in favor of the nominee? I just closed them before, so I will. Okay. <laughs> Post. Okay, we have a vice chairman also. Witness oath for director of planning, Mark Healy, and a zoning officer of this nominee. Ensures we don't have to do this every meeting. Yeah. Speaking for us. Okay, gentlemen, for raise your right hands. Um, aye, state your name. Aye, Vince Dominic. Do you solemnly swear? Solemnly swear. That the testimony that I provide. The testimony that I provide. At all of the meetings, whenever in attendance. In all the meetings. Will be truthful. Will be truthful. And complete. And complete. So help me God. So help me God. Very good. Okay, resolutions. Uh, Bomber ZDA 140016. Move it. Second. Ms. Grauman? Yes. Mr. McCracken? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. Mr. Gallo? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Uh, SUS ZDA 140017. Move it. Second. Ms. Grauman? Yes. Mr. McCracken? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. Mr. Gallo? Yes. yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Uh, vouchers, Mr. Bradshaw, January retainer, 865. Do we have a motion? Mo move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Uh, in the hearings section tonight, Phyllis Miller, CDA 14-00011. It's a hardship variance in which the applicant's proposing an addition at 122 Sydney Place, Somerset, Block 170, Lot 11. Point oh one in the R7 zone. This was carried from December 18th without any further notification. Do we have anybody connected with that application present? Hey, uh, Pete, you've been called. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Landford appearing on behalf of the applicant. 
this is an application to uh, for certain bulk variances to construct an addition to an existing single family residential dwelling located at 122 Sydney Place, uh, block 170, lot 11.01, .01, uh, which is just off of Hamilton Street. Uh, this property is uh, attached on one side, it's a duplex. Uh, my client owns the property and she'll testify as to the length of ownership. Uh, we are seeking to put an addition onto the part of the property that she currently owns. And based on the addition that she is seeking, we are going to have some coverage variances and a side yard variance. Uh, this evening I will present the testimony of the architect, Mr. Johnson, my client, and also our site engineer, Mr. Remo. Uh, to describe the site changes and also uh, to testify as to the variances as he is also a professional planner. I call as my first witness, Mr. Johnson. Hey, you got Julio's July uh, 5th memo it's updated? July? Uh, July, January. <laughs> right, you have that updated one? I, I just want to make sure it's up to reference. The right I have everything. Okay, so you ready? If you raise your right hand for me, solemnly swear or affirm to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Okay, Mr. Johnson, you got to speak in the I microphone. Do. Now, officially tell us who you are for the record. Uh, my name is uh, Lawrence Charles Johnson. Uh, I trade as Larry Johnson, architect. Okay. Uh, you can be seated, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson, you're a licensed architect in the state of New Jersey? Uh, yes, I am. And for a lot, how long have you been so licensed? Uh, for more than 20 years. Can you give the... You'll accept his qualifications. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Johnson, uh, you were retained by the applicant to prepare architectural plans for the ex uh, addition to the existing dwelling. Is that correct? That is correct. And you have brought with you this evening three uh, boards. Uh, the first two boards are actually part of the submission package that we made in conjunction with this application. Is that correct? That is correct. And you've marked those boards one, two, and three. Correct? That is correct. All right. Can you indicate, and starting with one, describe the size and the, of the existing house and what rooms are located within the existing dwelling at the present time? Okay, the, um, uh, why don't you go up to the board and kind of use your fingers to show us what's going on. Okay. The, um, and keep the mic very close to your mouth, okay. please. Thank you. The uh, existing house is a two-story uh, frame dwelling, slab on grade, no basement, um, has a, a front porch, and you enter the house into the living room with a stair that goes to the second floor. And then you pass through an arch, and there is a combination kitchen and dining area and a small powder room. There is also a laundry room in the uh, rear corner. On the second floor, uh, I'm not sure what was here before, but there is one large bedroom that the uh, owner occupies. And then there is a, uh, a small um, one-person bedroom on the second floor with a bath. And um, uh, a combination bath and powder room upstairs for its uh, combination use. So it has two entr entrances. Okay. That's, the house is approximately um, 525 square feet on each floor. 
So it's about a thousand square feet in total. Total living space. Yes. Okay, and this is an attached dwelling, and there is another dwelling to the left of the subject property as you're looking at it facing uh, from Sydney Street. That is correct. It's a duplex that's attached with a common wall. Uh, so obviously there's a zero lot line on one side of the subject property at the present time. That is correct. Okay. Exhibit number two shows what we are proposing to do to the subject property. Can you indicate what the changes are going to be? Yeah, what we uh, propose to do uh, because of the expansion of the family is to provide a, a game room, a family room, and a two-car garage on the first level. Um, that's a, uh, the game room is about 140 some square feet. The um, uh, family room is about 195, and the garage is about 440 square feet as a two car garage. It has an entrance, a new entrance into the house from inside the garage for passive security for the owner. And we go upstairs, and we left the exact footprint of the second floor and then we entered off of the platform that comes up the stairs into the new area, which will have a new uh, bedroom with closet, a new laundry area, and then a master bedroom with a, uh, an attached uh, bathroom. That whole footprint is about, uh, 800 and about 800 square feet. So then it would be a three-bedroom house at that point? Actually, it'll be, I believe, a four-bedroom four. Four house. Okay. Um, the the one uh, bedroom that exists now in the in the existing house that seems quite large. <coughs> How big is that bed? Well, it it's a it's a um, it's a long, narrow bedroom. It's only about ten foot wide, and it's about twenty-seven foot long. It's like a bowling alley. It, it appears to me that someone just kind of took a wall out early on and just kind of made a larger room. Um, and that's what the owner now uses as her master bedroom. It is about 240 some <laughs> square feet. Uh, but it's, it's very um, awkward. Well, it, it is a habitat for humanity. It, habitat, that is not. Correct. So yes. they were, I guess, working with uh, uh, limited resources and limited space. So yes. that's what they ended up with. Okay. This, uh, oh, the exterior of the house. All right, uh, that's on exhibit three, yeah, shows uh, the exterior of the house. Yeah. yeah, the exterior of the house, what I'm showing in the top photograph is a combination of both houses. The house that you see that's toward the forefront is um, the neighbor's house. Okay. The existing house that we're talking about to work on is the house that's a little more in the background. What we propose to do is when we put the addition on the two-car garage and the bedroom addition above that will be to the right. All of the materials on the exterior will be exactly the same. That was one of the stipulations of the Habitat for Humanity. So you're bringing the addition forward so that it will... Uh, more or less line up. Line up with Not the, exactly dimensionally. But more or less but, line yeah, up with the uh, That's other correct. House. And make it look like it's all one dwelling unit. And um, the garage, has, it's a two-car garage. And um, we're proposing to um, leave the other house pretty much like it is, hopefully to enhance it maybe with, with shutters. and. Um, well, who owns that house? What, yeah, I, I'm not sure I know the owner's name. Well, it, but it sounds like the way that you say that, it sounds like like somehow you're going to do some sort of construction on it. Or oh, no, 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 no. We don't have to touch the other house. I, no, I was going to ask the question. When you said the other house, you mean the original part well, of the house. Say, the, the, one side of the duplex is yeah. going to stay exactly as it is. Right. Which is what you're seeing here. Right. Okay, that's staying like, exactly like it is. From... This line over, we're putting on an addition. And this house that's already here stays exactly like it is. I so you're not going to in any way touch the exterior, impact the exterior of the second duplex, the second house of the duplex? No, 
No, the, what we have to do is to match siding and color and uh, width of uh, siding and that kind of thing uh, on our new addition so that the whole house still looks like it's one house. But this, this, is, this is as best as a uh, rendering of this as uh, I could propose here. How old is the entire dwelling? Uh, that I'd have to ask the... 1999. Is it going to be difficult to match up uh, exterior um, siding and so on so that it doesn't look... Well, the, the colors are, are fairly beige, and the new beige siding um, in different sunlights, I think you'll see some difference, but I don't think you're going to see a drastic difference in the, in the color tones. So I, as I look at the existing house, it looks like uh, in your photograph and your black and white in, in number three, your black and white in number three, it looks like there's a car there. So what's going to happen is essentially the car that's outside is now going to be in the garage. That is correct. Okay. That's an existing driveway which will pull right up to the garage. And I missed I missed the square footage. You, your your other house is a thousand square feet, right? On um, both levels. Yes. And what will it be after you're done? Here? Uh, when we're all done, the living area is approximately uh, 2,400 square feet on both levels. A, a cumulative, a yeah. total or of 2,400? Total, total for, in, including the existing and the new ground floor and second floor. Okay. So you're more than doubling the square foot. No, I, I think it sounds like that's what he's saying, but I'm going to ask him again. What is the total square footage of the new house, including the old part and the new part? The old part and the new part is approximately 2,400 square feet. Okay. It's a thousand now, right? That's living space. Now, I'm not dealing with the footprint. The, uh, the uh, uh, surveyors can give you a little more information exactly on the footprint, but this is the living area of the house within the within the walls of the house. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I could ask a question of, of Mr. Lanfrit. Sir. Um, the board was asking questions about the relation of the, the, the new portion, the new building, as it relates to the old. Um, well, there is a deed, there is a restriction in the, in the deed restriction that was imposed by um, Habitat for Humanity when the, when the property was built. And that states that the grantee shall not make any changes to the common elements such as changes, such, uh, unless such changes continue the uniformity of the two adjoining properties. Thus, the common elements such as vinyl siding, roof, and privacy fence shall be maintained in such a way that the two units shall always be, in, always be uniform in their color and appearance. Um, so my question to you is, what obligation do you have to go to Habitat to make sure that this proposal is consistent with that requirement? Well, we I don't think we necessarily have to notify Habitat, but we can, you know, surely if the board wants us to give them the information when we pick out the materials, we can provide it. Uh, it there's nothing in the document that says that they have to approve uh, the colors of the roof or the colors of the siding. Obviously, if it is not consistent, we have violated one of the conditions of the deed, and I assume they can bring a cause of action against us, but we'd be glad to provide them with the the materials and everything else prior to actually going forward and constructing. Pat, if I could put you on the spot, what, what, here we have an application where, um, yeah, it, I think it's a, it's obviously a subjective judgment as to whether what they're proposing is consistent and is changing, and we have a deed restriction that gives habitat. Some well, I haven't read this. That. I haven't read this, but let me ask you this: who? Is there, do they hold a mortgage? I mean, how does it, how does it set up? What, what keeps Habitat's strings on or don't they just sell it and move on? Uh, I can respond to that, Mr. Bradshaw, if I may. Uh, 
this property was purchased by Miss Miller in 1999. There was a mortgage uh, that was provided by Habitat, which mortgage has in fact been paid off. Uh, the only restrictions and the only documents that she has signed, and I'm just going to put them in evidence, and I will put them in shortly, is the deed and the deed restrictions. And those deed restrictions obviously run to Habitat because they were the grantors and they have certain restrictions on, on how much we can resell the unit for, uh, that, uh, that they have the right of first refusal, uh, that the resale price must be set forth by color regulations, and there is also uh, the this sentence that was read by, or actually the two sentences read by Mr. Healy that said if we make any changes, we have to match what's already there. Right, right. But there's nothing in any of the documents that I've reviewed, including the deed that says we have to get their consent or approval. Uh, I'm concerned, of course, the status of COA these days is who the hell knows, but um, <laughs> in terms of making this, uh, expanding the house, um, is that going to in any way impact the um, the color credits or the uh, affordability issues can, can in I terms just, of resale? Um, can we just table that just for a second? Because that is an issue and it needs to come up. But let me just finish that one thought. Okay. Um, to your question. Um, that deed restriction has no impact on this board's jurisdiction. You grant this, not you. <laughs> the board grants this uh, on its merit if, it, if, if they meet the proofs. Um, I'm not the attorney for uh, the homeowner. Um, if the homeowner has, has put themselves in jeopardy, it's, it's really of no concern to the board and they have an attorney who's obviously going to instruct them whether or not he thinks that this is a violation of that or not. But we don't have the standing. And quite frankly, better than that, it's not our concern in terms of the deed restriction. Now, to Laura's point, that's why I wanted to segue. That's a different thing as to whether or not the, the township is going to lose co credits for affordable units. That, well, that i got to punt to you on. Yeah, and I'll give you a very brief uh, history of, of this unit uh, as I know it. it this differs... Um, from a lot of the other more current habitat units where the units that habitat has built within the last five or ten years almost all of them were sold by the township uh, there were development agreements there are deed restrictions and uh, that where the, the township is party to those deed restrictions and if they want to change anything they have to get the township's approval uh, this was not this is not this history this application uh, the property was sold uh, purchased by Habitat from a private entity. Um, they purchased the house. Ms. Miller, uh, I think she was the original owner. Um, I think when the township did our affordable housing plan, must have done an inventory of the different Habitat units and said, oh, look, there's a Habitat unit. It's restricted for low income. Let's include that as one of our affordable units. Um, so to that degree, there is an interest by the township not, not necessarily directly this board, but the township as a whole, to make sure that the unit stays creditable as a low-income unit. Um, so I guess the, to, to answer your question of, of whether this would jeopardize um, our ability to credit it, I, I, my initial impression is no. Um, there is a deed restriction in place that, that limits this unit to low-income households in perpetuity. Um, I think there is some language in here that could be clarified. Um, my understanding is it's, it's low income. There is some language in here that says low and or mod, modern income. I think that needs to be clarified because I think all habitat units are low income, not, not, uh, not moderate. Um, and it also says that there's some language in here that says that when they sell it, the, the new homeowner has to be uh, certified as being income eligible. But it doesn't say who does that. Well people that we use to do that is the Central Jersey Housing Resource Center. So I would recommend, again, at, at the end of this, if the board is inclined to approve this, um, that there be some um, uh, a condition that we have a, an addendum to the deed clarifying those issues. And, I, and in my opinion, I think that does speak to, you know, that is a, a, a public, uh, I think that speaks to the negative criteria. You know, if this is, if your granting of the variances would if in any way jeopardize our ability to credit that unit, 
that would be a detriment and those conditions I think would address that to that question mr. Healy right now Franklin Township and everybody every other municipality is on the second round of COA correct second round uh, well, well you, you have a round 3.x 3.x who knows what yeah and as a matter of fact there were hearings as late as yesterday by before the Supreme Court is concerning where co is going is that are you aware of that or not as of yesterday I was not aware uh, okay anyway as of the last does this township have a certification as to their co units right now when, when, when the state was reviewing plans and certifying <laughs> yes we were okay and when the last time that the state reviewed and certified the plan did you meet the state requirements for affordable housing? Yes. And as a matter of fact, did you not exceed the state requirements based on the last review for affordable housing? Yes. Okay. So, and I don't, I don't think we would lose the credit for this unit, but if you should lose the credit for this one unit, it doesn't put you in jeopardy with the previous approval or certification that you got from COA. Is that correct? I'm not so well, sure that I'm so concerned about that. I like the keep all the ones we got yeah it, it, I don't <clears throat> again I'm just but but his point is that this would be a detriment to the zone plan and I think if, well, if you still are in quality compliance with COA as it sits today well, losing it doesn't necessarily make it a detriment but mm, again no, I wouldn't agree with that I wouldn't agree with that either <clears throat> any diminution is a problem because there's going to be more requirements coming down the stream uh, we don't know that something <clears throat> Yeah, the obligation comes from the Supreme Court. You know, all of the, the issues out there about COA are <coughs> how do you get there and, and the rules. Correct. You know, the obligation, there is going to be an obligation unless the New Jersey Supreme Court does away with the Mount Laurel decisions. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be an obligation whether it's one or 3,000. I, I, I understand. We've had this discussion before. I understand that. And, and obviously, you know, you're still in, with other projects that are being developed, uh, getting more COA units within the municipality. But I, just for the record, the only point I wanted to make is that based on your latest certification, this one unit doesn't make or break the town. Well, as Mr. Shepard said, I think every last unit makes a difference. It will I, not that make wasn't the question. It won't make or break the township, but every <laughs> unit makes a difference. Thank you. Can I clarify one thing? Uh, sure. You said this. This is a color uh, photograph. It is. Yes. Yeah, so that's why the colors look like that because that is the color. <laughs> Sky looks pretty sad, but okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll go along with you on that because <laughs> you see the one below. It yeah, has a blue the, sky. Yeah, this is so a, I look at the one that has the gray, gray sky, and I say it's a black and white picture. Every day is not. It a has a sepia <laughs> kind of. Look. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? But it just now, now I have another question, day. and I don't know who's got the information, but is the other house a a, a, um, a, a habitat for humanities houses? Yes, well? yes, it is. Okay, just wondering. Uh, I have no further questions of Mr. Johnson, unless any board members or the public have any questions of Mr. Johnson. Any other questions? Is he testifying about the variances? No. Okay. I think there are other COA houses in the uh, Hamilton Street Business District as well. Yes, this up up, up near the um, there there are Third bank and, and there are other streets. COA houses. Uh, I believe, and I don't want to. Uh, this is actually not in the Hamilton Street. It's it's one lot removed or a lot and a half removed from the Hamilton Street Business District. This is actually in the R7 zone. R7 zone. I just wanted uh -huh. to make, confirm that before I answered your question. Okay. Now, you have another witness then. I, ha I have two other witnesses. That's, well, that's one of the things I wanted to address too. But uh, you, you have a witness, I'm assuming that's going to address such things as how this fits in with the neighborhood, and especially the size, you're, you're more than doubling the size of one unit on a lot that's already undersized. And I guess that would be the planner? That would be the engineer and planner, yes. All right. Before we move on, though, we'll open to the public to see if there are any questions for the, this witness concerning his testimony. So. Are there any people who would like to ask 
this witness questions concerning what he just testified to. If not, then we'll close. And Mrs. Miller. Peter, are you marking any of those? Is that any of uh, this number? I guess I should put a, a one, two, and three besides. Okay. Um, he already had them marked one, two, and three. While he's doing that, Ms. Miller, I can swear in if you raise your right hand. He saw me swear or affirm to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Okay. And your name, just for the record, into the mic. Phyllis D. Miller. Okay, thanks. Mrs. Miller, you are the owner of the property that's the subject of this application, is that correct? Yes. And you acquired title to this property by a deed from the Rarent Valley Habitat from Humanities, Inc. in July of 1999? Yes, I did. And I'm showing you a copy of the deed. And is this a true and accurate copy of the deed to your property? Yes. I would like to mark that as A4. Now, Mrs. Miller, when you acquired the subject property, uh, you acquired it from the Habitat, and it was an affordable housing unit. Yes. And it is an affordable housing unit today. Yes. Okay. And when you acquired the property, there were certain deed restrictions that were made part of your deed. Is that correct? Yes. And those deed restrictions indicate that you are limited as to whom you can sell the property and for what price you can sell the property. Do you understand that? Correct. Okay, and there's also a right of first refusal uh, by Habitat should you should they want to acquire the property back when it's re when you're ready to sell the property. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and then you heard Mr. Johnson and my discussions with Mr. Healy regarding the other deed restrictions that are in the deed, and you're familiar with those restrictions and understand them, correct? Yes, I do. Other than those restrictions that are contained in your deed, were there any other documents provided to you? Uh, from Habitat uh, about what you can or cannot do with respect to your property? Well, I got an email. Well, that's now, yeah, but when you bought the property. Oh, no. Okay. Now, you bought the property in 1999. Uh, when you moved into the property, who resided there? I did, and I had three children. Okay. And since 1999, what happened to your three young children? They grew up and moved out. Okay. And after your three young children moved out, what's the current situation? Is there a residence in your house now? I have two grandchildren that I'm raising. So you're, they're living with you full time? Full time. Okay. Anybody else resides in the house? And I have a four-year-old granddaughter that I have every weekend. Okay. And any other people who may or may not be living in the house? And I hope to um, have my mother, who is 82 years old, move with me soon. Okay. Now, when you, now you, you had a mortgage when you bought the property, correct? Correct. And you paid the mortgage off? Yes, I did. Okay. And when you thought about expanding the house, did you contact Habitat? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you uh, get an email from a Nancy Asbury from Habitat Humanities in January, of, I'm sorry, June of 2012? Yes. Okay. And what did that email say? Well, it said that um, I was able to um, build on my home and um, as long as I didn't interfere with the other property, with the commonalities, I was able to um, build. And she also said something about um, it would still have to stay within the market value for habitat, something like that. Okay, and as a matter of fact, and I'll mark the email into evidence, the language that she had in responding to your email is the same language that was in the deed about uh, not making any changes unless they uh, have continuous uh, uniformity and the common elements must be the same. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, can I mark this A5? What was the additional language with respect to the cost? Uh, or resale <coughs> in the email or yes. there, there is all right 
I actually have copies. Let me pass it out and I'll read it to you. I have enough copies for everybody. Now, in this email, it basically indicates that obviously they have to look into the resale value of the property since you put an addition on the property. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And, and you understand that by putting the addition that you want to the property, uh, you may never recoup all of the monies that you put into the property because you're restricted as to what you can sell the property for. I'm aware of that. Okay, well, why would you want to do this as opposed to selling it and buying another house? You're stealing all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me answer them. Um, I like the house. Um, I'm committed to um, my home. I built that. And so, um, you know, I have some sentimental values there. And uh, I don't want to move. I like my area. And... I like my house. When you say you built it, was that part of the sweat equity? Yeah, 250, 250 sweat equity hours. Okay. Now, also, Ms. Miller, uh, when Mr. Johnson testified earlier, he talked about that one large room in the upper level of the house. Uh, was that always that size, that room? No, it was actually two rooms. It was another bedroom. We moved the wall and just extended my bedroom. And the, how is the breakout of the living arrangement going to take place if the board were to approve this application? Well, the current room that I have now is going to be split with uh, my grandsons living in there, and my granddaughter will have their current little room, and I'll have the new master bedroom that they put on, and my mother will have the other room, the other bedroom. Okay. And also, at the present time, you do not have a garage at the property. Is that correct? Correct. And uh, this will provide you the opportunity to have a garage? Yes. Okay. And when the house was originally built, uh, and we note that part of the plan is a two-car garage, was there a lot of storage in the uh, original house? No, I have no cellar. I have no attic. I had a shed in the back, but it's just not enough room to store things. Okay, and with your family regrowing, uh, whether you have a second car or use part of that garage for storage, that's what you intend to use it for? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Any board questions? Mr. Chairman, I, I, I just I need to address the letter or the email that Mr. Lamp provided from Habitat. Um, Mr. Lamford, is this... Is, is Nancy Asbury the current executive director of Habitat? I do not believe she is. Okay. Um, in a way, I wish you hadn't produced the letter. And, and the reason I say that is that, you know, based on our discussion a few minutes ago, Mr. Bradshaw basically said that the terms of the deed restriction are basically between you and your client and Habitat and are not necessarily a matter of the board. Uh, and then he presented an exhibit that's basically saying, suggesting that Habitat is okay with what your client intends to do. Um, I can tell you that I've received calls from the current staff of Habitat expressing the exact opposite. Um, based on what Mr. Bradshaw had advised the board, I wasn't going to mention that because it didn't, you know, it didn't pertain to the board's uh, decision. So if Habitat wanted to exercise their concern with the deed restriction, they had that right. And now you presented an exhibit which suggests that they're okay. And that, that's, that's, based on my conversations with staff of Habitat, that's not accurate as well, of 2015. And I, the, the reason I put that into evidence, I know there's a, that information is in there, is that to indicate uh, to the board that she did try to seek clearance 
as to what she was going to do before she started this project. Vis-a-vis -vis the, agree the agreement, the deed is the controlling document. The deed controls what a habitat can or cannot do. And the, the restrictions that are set forth in the deed are clear. Uh, she is restricted as to who she can sell the property to, for what price she can sell the property to, and if she is going to make changes in or to the property, uh, she has the right to do it. While you may have had conversations with Habitat that say they may not like what she's doing or may not think that's proper, the question is, is it legal? And the only controlling document is the deed. She has a contractual relationship with Habitat based on that deed and, and nothing else. Well, well, to be fair, it, it wasn't necessarily that, that it wasn't just that they didn't like it. Uh, they were concerned that she didn't have the ability or the legal right to do it based on the language in the deed. But I, I think a fair way or a fair and accurate way to describe what has gone on is I think your client approached Habitat in 2012 when she started this project, when she had the idea for the project, approached the then executive director who basically said, basically gave it an okay, mm -hmm. subject to certain things. Based on that, she started the project into 2013, 2014, you know, and you know, in the latter, I guess the Hab Habitat has since changed staff, changed executive director, and then the now, cur now current uh, staff has a different opinion. Okay. Which I think, I guess what it boils down to again, goes back to what Mr. Bradshaw said before, if Habitat feels that there are some things that they can enforce in their deed, it is up to them to enforce That it. is between us and Habitat. I think it's clear she understands she um, may or may not have some risks, and she's willing to go forward with it. Exactly. And, and again, I, no. the reason I put the email into evidence was to show the, the progression of how she moved forward with this and that she just you know, didn't choose to do it without trying to get some clearance before she started this lengthy process uh, and I guess there's an understanding that uh, if this property has too great a value it's still going to be sold for what it's sold for you're going to may not recoup what you put into it and I guess that is the major point well if yeah if it's restricted continues to be restricted for low income it'll be sold for significantly less than what the market rate would somebody be. will get a real good deal <laughs> my kids <laughs> Question. I have a question. Um, w what is on the lot to the north? I guess that would be to the, if you're facing the house, to the right of the house. It is, for lack of a better word, a storage yard. If you look at Mr. Healy's report on the last page, there's, or next to the last page is an aerial photograph. And Mrs. Miller, can you describe what's next to you to the right? Uh, storage bins, trucks, um, uh, just a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's been there ever since I moved in. And that's owned by that commercial building on Hamilton Street? Yes. Okay. And on the plan, it shows a dog run to be relocated, but it doesn't show where. If you're going to need yeah. board approval for that, you should probably pick a location. Uh, actually, she's, it's not going to be relocated because we okay. don't need it. It's just going to be removed. Removed. Okay. Um, Ms. Bredulia, I do have photographs of the adjoining property, and just so we can get them for the record. Ms. Miller, did you take these photographs of the property next to you? Yes, I did. And when did you take them? This morning. Okay. And they accurately depict some of the trailers and other materials that are on the adjoining property? Yes. Can I have those marked as A6? Six. Six. I only have one set. And there's three photographs that you took, Ms. Miller? Yes. Thank you. Starting with Mr. Rich. Do you have any flooding problems in those areas with heavy rains? No, I don't. No. 
and your house is on a slab. Yes. Okay. In these photos, is this the view from your property? Yes. Yes, from my top window. Okay. Ms. Miller, uh, if I may ask you, what, what's located across the street from you? Across the street is a vacant lot. Okay, and to the left of the vacant lot is a company, electric company. Okay, and there's it's trucks and all kinds of stuff. Other commercial vehicles. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Again, we'll open to the public. Is there anyone who would like to ask this witness questions concerning her testimony? Not, then we will close. Before I call my next witness, I would like to put it into evidence Exhibit A7, uh, as the board is very well aware. Uh, we are seeking variances for uh, impervious coverage uh, for deficient side yard. The lot adjacent to us on the right is an undeveloped lot. Uh, there's materials on it, but it's not developed. Uh, I. At, uh, on behalf of Mrs. Miller, wrote to the adjoining property owner on June 24th of this year, asking if he would be interested in selling the property, which, if he was, would have made for, for some interesting legal issues. Uh, <laughs> but uh, be that as it may, I have a letter signed by him indicating that he is not interested in selling the property, and I would mark that into evidence as A7. I'd like to call as my next witness, Mr. Remo. Raise your right hand for me, solemnly swear or affirm, tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And your name for the record. My name is Mark, M A R C, last name Remo, R E M O. I'm from Remo Engineering, LLC. Mr. Remo, you can have a seat. Where's your office located? My office is in Freehold. Okay, and you're a licensed engineer and professional planner in the state of New Jersey? That's correct. Can you give the board the benefit of your educational and professional background? Sure. Uh, I'm a licensed professional engineer in New Jersey, New York, uh, several other states, and Washington, D.C. I'm also a licensed professional planner in New Jersey and a certified municipal engineer. I have approximately uh, 29 years' experience in all aspects of site plan and subdivision design. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Remo, uh, you prepared uh, the, the site plan for the subject property, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Can you, first of all, briefly describe the existing conditions at the subject property? Sure. The uh, property being developed is known as Lot 11.01 .01 in Block 170, also known as 122 Sydney Place. The site is located on the west side of Sydney Place, approximately 150 feet north of the intersection with Rose Street. The property is a rectangular shaped lot. The dimensions of the lot are 50 feet by 100 feet, and the property has 50 feet of frontage along Sydney Place. The area of the property is 5,000 square feet, or 0.11 acres. Currently, the site is developed and contains a two-story attached single-family dwelling, which is one half of a duplex structure. In addition, the site contains an asphalt paved driveway, a shed, and a concrete patio. The remainder of the site is predominantly lawn area with a few trees. The uh, topography of the site moderately slopes generally in an easterly and a westerly direction from a high point near the middle of the property towards Sydney Street and the rear property line. The uh, site is located within the R7 residential zone district. To the north, the site adjoins a commercial storage yard located within the HBD Hamilton Street Business Zone District. <coughs> the properties to the south, east, and west of the site are residential uses located in the R7 Zone District. The applicant for the project proposes to construct a two-story addition to the existing dwelling. The addition includes a two-car garage. The addition is proposed on the north side of the existing dwelling. 
the footprint area of the addition is approximately 860 square feet. The addition will be set back 29.83 feet from Sydney Place, 7.75 feet from the northerly side property line, and 21 feet from the rear property line. With regard to parking, the proposed two-car garage and driveway combination will provide three and a half parking spaces. That's based on the residential site improvement standards. With regard to drainage, proposed drainage improvements planned include the construction of a stormwater seepage pit for roof runoff. The seepage pit will be located within the uh, property on the northeast corner of the site. All roof runoff from the proposed addition will be directed to the seepage pit to control post-development runoff from the site. So would that essentially offset the, the uh, coverage? Um, yeah, we're storing the increase in the uh, in the roof area. Because that, that, that's the thing that concerns me more than anything yeah. on this application. Since we are providing a stormwater seepage pit, there should be no significant adverse impact on downstream areas and drainage facilities from the development of the site. With regard to utilities, the uh, proposed addition will be served by existing gas, water, electric, and sanitary sewer loca utilities located on site. These utilities will be relocated to avoid conflicts with the new addition foundation. There's uh, no landscaping proposed for the project. However, all areas disturbed will be seeded or sodded, and existing trees will be uh, preserved where possible. Variances, uh, there are several variances required, some of which are pre-existing conditions. They are as follows. Minimum lot area required is 7,500 square feet, where 5,000 square feet is existing and proposed. Minimum lot frontage required is 75 feet, where 50 feet is existing and proposed. The lot area and the lot frontage variances are attributed to the undersized nature of the existing property, which cannot easily be remedied. Neither the lot area nor the lot frontage variances will be exacerbated by this application. The need for these variances cannot be eliminated because the lot is a pre-existing lot and the applicant cannot purchase additional land. Minimum both side yard setback required is 20 feet, where 7.7 .7 feet 7.75 feet is proposed. This variance is attributed to the undersized nature of the existing property, which cannot be easily remedied. If the property had the required 75 feet of frontage, this variance would not be needed. Minimum building coverage required is 20%, where 32.3% is proposed. The maximum impervious coverage required is 30%, where 38.9% percent is existing and 51.2 percent is proposed. These variances are attributed to the size of the dwelling and exacerbated by the undersized nature of the existing lot. These variances will be mitigated by providing a stormwater seepage pit to manage runoff from the increased building coverage. This lot is unique from many other lots in the R7 zone because its location adjoining a commercial storage yard and the HBD Hamilton Street business zone district. The proposed addition is on the northerly side of the property, which is the side that adjoins the commercial storage yard. Now, that commercial storage yard, is, is that zoned commercial there? Yes, it's in the HBD uh, zone district. Okay. It's in the business district. All right. Which adjoins. Is this, and is this house also in the business district? No, it's not. No, the house is in the R7. So, uh, so we're right at the edge of the residential and the business district that is correct and that's one of the reasons you said it would present interesting legal problems well that and also if he was going to sell the property then the part that is sold would not necessarily be subject to color requirements and, and the other part of it is and i don't even want to go there that, that, that's enough really <laughs> <laughs> I have enough problems. the uh Project addresses the positive criteria by being a beneficial use that promotes the general welfare. This dwelling is, a, is an affordable housing unit, and the applicant's intent is to maintain it as such. Further, the project promotes a desirable visual environment. This project, with its planned addition and improvements, will enhance the neighborhood and provide a desirable visual environment. The project does not appear to be out of character to some other lots in the surrounding neighborhood. Can you give the, us some examples of that? 
Yeah, well, there's, uh, I mean, there's several lots that are actually smaller than this one, and also, um, I believe on, if you, it, it, to the rear of the property, but on Prospect Street, there's actually uh, uh, a duplex that looks like the coverage is probably over the required uh, maximum for that zone, because it's also in the R7 zone. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, there are some other uh, houses in the area that taking up most of, most of the lot, or at least uh, over the uh, requirement. Uh, the proposed addition will have uh, room sizes that are just sufficient to serve their intended use. The property remains suitable for the planned building addition at its increased coverage. There will be plenty of room on site still. The aesthetics of the dwelling will be substantially improved and will conform to other dwellings in the neighborhood. The proposed improvements will have a positive effect on values of the surrounding properties. This proposal with the requested variances better promotes the character of the neighborhood and better preserves property values in the adjacent neighborhood. These are valid special reasons in support of the variances. Within, within this framework, the project uh, satisfies the positive criteria of the statute. The development application affirmatively addresses a negative criteria of the statute. The requested variances can be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without a substantial impairment to the zone plan. The uh, project impacts the public good in a positive manner. This is an affordable housing unit, and the applicant's intent is to maintain it as an affordable housing unit. The proposed building addition and the improvements will conform and improve the aesthetics of the neighborhood. There will be a marked improvement in the area. Why do you say that? Why do you say it'll be an improvement in the neighborhood? Well, because the building addition is is new. We're providing a two-car garage. Uh, so yeah, but you're 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 pushing over into the side lot. You're you're minimizing the the side lot variance. I think you're just reciting what's what's in the statute. I don't think you've really you don't have any evidence that there are other houses in the neighborhood that have that have, you can basically off the off the cuff say there's another house on another street well over that is on the same sort of thing where they're using more than the minimum impervious coverage but you've got no evidence and what you're saying now is you're simply reciting the statute I don't see that I don't see that at all in fact the thing that I think is 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 tr most troublesome to me about this design is that the garage is going to stick out further toward the front of the house than the room, than the other part, and it's going to look all. It's not going to look right. It's not going to look like it's part of a single idea. I'm not quite sure why somebody, except for the fact that she wanted to have a 28 foot garage in the back, those two side fronts should have been to the same depth. They shouldn't have been. This other one shouldn't stick out further. So I don't agree with what you're saying that it's going to be an improvement. Uh, what's the total square footage of the entire building when it's finished? It's, it's got to be over 3,000. The total square footage of the entire building? Correct. Uh, I think because you're making this to look like one unit. You, one you, you're talking about including the other unit? Yes. The other unit is essentially the same size probably a little bit smaller than you know we're looking at it than than our unit uh no, it's probably the same size so uh, it would be a thousand square feet so together you're talking about a structure of about 3400 square feet if you add both lots together okay, but, so but but you're doing this to make them look like one one so how many other residents in the neighborhood are 3400 square feet on a 5,000 square foot property. But Mr. Thomas, we'd have to do all the calculations, but again, you, you can't then just say it's a 50 foot lot. You have to look at it as a, as a, a 10,000 square foot lot because if you're going to add the other unit, you got to add all the other lot area. Do that. How many more 3,400 square foot houses are there? I, again, this is a, this would be well, considered both of them. Your testimony was that this is enhancing the neighborhood. It's Improving the appearances, you know, I would agree. Normally, a new structure is going to do that, but is, is this getting the if you have out of character? You haven't shown me that it is in character. Well, can you? Can you? 
very much a transition property. It's right next to uh, a lot, and we have the picture of it. The, this is a question. That's a good point. I don't disagree with that, but I expect the witness to be telling us that. Yeah. How big is that? Yeah, yeah, the cup. Can you give us a second, Mr. Chairman, so we can do some calculation? Okay, the, uh, the development uh, application affirmatively addresses a negative criteria to statute. The requested variances can be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without a substantial impairment to the uh, zone plan. The project uh, impacts the public good in a positive manner. It's an affordable housing unit, and the uh, applicant intends to keep it that way. The proposed building addition uh, will conform and improve the aesthetics of the neighborhood. It will be a marked improvement in the area. And Mr. Remo, before you can uh, conclude, a couple questions. The, the addition does not abut a, a residential use or a future residential use in that it's in a business district. Is that correct? Right. Okay. And also, if you can calculate, Mr. Uh, Shepard talked about the garage sticking out uh, significantly. Can you indicate what the setback is of the adjacent property, the other half of the duplex, from uh, Sydney Place. It's a, it, it looks like it's approximately 32 uh, feet. Okay. And what would be the setback of our property with the garage addition? 29.83 feet. So there's a three foot discrepancy between the two properties? Approximately, okay. yes. Thank you. No further questions. Any other board questions? Pete, you're going to have to give him one of the one of the mics since we're we're down a mic. Oh, uh, Theodore Chase, old old Georgetown Road. What I, I really wanted to ask this about the last witness, but Mr. Thomas, you were not speaking very close to the mic, and your call for the public <laughs> got past me. Uh, it's really a very technical question. How is the limitation on sales price st specified in the deed? Is it specified? Surely it isn't specified as a specific amount. It's specified as whatever the state declares to be the uh, maximum for a low-income property. 
based low on low income buyer at this time at the time of sale. That is correct, and and also that price is set based on the size of the unit and the number of bedrooms. So it would, it, and the bedrooms are really the controlling factor. If you have a two bedroom unit, the the sales price is X. If you have a three bedroom unit, it's Y. But and those prices are set by COA. Yeah, that's yeah essentially what I thought that. In essence, it could now uh, hold a larger family. Therefore, the limit would be higher. So it would be it would be a little bit higher because there would be more bedrooms. But it still would be only a low uh, income individual that can uh, purchase that based on COA guidelines. No. Anybody else wish to ask any questions? Okay, then we'll close next. Can I recall Mrs. Miller to ask her? Thank you. Ms. Miller. Thank you. Mrs. Miller, uh, you heard some of the questions that were raised by some of the board members concerning other houses in the neighborhood and, you know, duplexes. Are you familiar with other houses surrounding your property that are in a similar situation to yours? Yes, I am. Uh, can you indicate where those properties are and do you have a photograph of one of the properties? Um, yes, I do. There's a large duplex um, on Sydney Place to the right of me, down, down the street, right across from me. Okay, and is this a picture of that house? Yes, it is. Okay, and can I have that marked? I think we're on A8. Is that correct, Mr. Bradshaw? Let's see here. Eight. Uh, is this house newer than yours or older than yours? It's actually newer than mine. Okay. And it is a duplex with a garage on for each unit? Yes. Okay. And was there anything else done to that house or property? No. Okay. And I know you're not an engineer and you didn't go out and measure... Uh, the exact dimensions, but uh, can you indicate uh, compared to your unit as it is today, is, are those two units bigger than your unit or they're, smaller? They're larger than my unit. Okay. And do you know of any other houses in the immediate neighborhood that are duplexes that are in a similar situation? Yes, I do. And where would they be? On the back street, I don't know, is that, I forget the name of that street, but is a prospect? prospect on prospect street there's another huge duplex okay and again you didn't go out and measure but is the lot similar in size to your lot yes it is okay do you know whether that is a affordable unit or not an affordable i unit? don't know okay thank you mrs sure and also um there's a three-car garage that was just built on rose street right behind my house basically and who owns that garage? The, the owner of the company across the street from me. For, for business purposes? For business purposes. Okay, so there's a business use behind you? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a question about the uh, inner zone plan, um, about infill. Uh, uh, I think one of the policies of our plan are, are when there's vacant lots, um, We've done a lot of infilling. And yeah, Are you asking the question of her? Or? I, I'm going to ask her a question once, yeah. once, once Bruce gets done. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Mark, you would know uh, in that area what, what the policy for our infilling. A lot of the, a lot of times there'll be two lots together and then somebody will split one off and then we'll I, I remember we've we've done that a couple of times where we've put up a, a house on a smaller lot um, well I mean the, the, the zone is uh, I'm not sure exactly what the question is but I mean the zone is the R7 zone um, it's a density question really. well they are allowed to have but this 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 the density that's um, currently on this site um, is is a little bit more than we than we currently allow. We, we, we changed the ordinance uh, a while back um, where each single family home has to have 7,500 square feet and then the duplex has to have 15,000 square feet. And I think this is 10,000 altogether. 
um, that at the time that was a compliant uh, application they wouldn't be able to do that today um, but it was compliant at the time and the zone does allow duplexes so it, it, the R7 zone is our most dense uh, single and two family zone in the town if that answers your question pretty much yeah You got a question, Bob? Yes. Um, I'll just hold on one second. One other. Pete, uh, did you? What is this a picture of? A neighbor's house? Yes, it's a house down the street from me. Oh, okay, thank you. Now the the front yard setback on this property is is what? I'm looking at the is it 25 feet it's 25 feet and we will be at 29.83 feet so we do meet the front yard setback requirement as proposed Then I don't have any questions. If, it's, if she's within the if she's within the limit of what she's allowed to do, I thought she was too far forward. But it's just that uh, I would like to see the the her house be at the same depth as the other piece, so that it's it's much more geometrically uniform, as is the house across the street. Sorry. She'd have to set the garage or take about three feet off of the, the garage. Can I take a time out and discuss it with her? Yeah. We can take a general five minute recess.
Sorry, Pete, I put it back on for you. Okay. It's helpful, right? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I had an opportunity to discuss with my client, also with the architect and the engineer, uh, the issue of moving the uh, addition back three feet. And I think what we can do, first of all, the rear yard setback is 20 feet. We were at 21 feet, so we can move it one foot back without okay. any good. And what we would do is also move the lower, or shrink the size of the lower level so that we do move it back three feet, but we'd like to have a two foot overhang so the bedrooms are at least of a decent size okay. on the upper level. Good. I think that we can do. Good. That's great. Thank you. Does that over, if you move the back with the overhang, is that going to impact the. Uh, the overhang will be in the front. So it, it will not violate the setback. But you'll have a longer driveway and more impervious coverage? The impervious coverage won't change. Well, it'll change by one foot. It'll be slightly more impervious coverage by one foot. And I guess we would redesign if, if it's required the drywall to calculate. Well, you, you already have to give us new cal. Yeah, so we'll, we'll give you the calculations to address the stormwater for that additional foot of coverage. And, and, and Pete, because I know we didn't get to it, I assume you're going to comply with all this, this the reports? Well, you didn't say that, but I'm assuming that's the case. Yeah, I, I didn't get to that, but all of the staff reports we have reviewed, all of the engineering changes and any other comments as far as revisions to the plans we would be willing to make and all of those revisions would not alter what you're looking at this evening. All right, any further board questions? We'll open to the public for any comments concerning this application. Okay, I see no one, so we'll close. Final. Very, very briefly. Uh, first of all, I thank the board for their time and their attention. Uh, this is a, a rather different and unique application and we have a longtime township resident who has invested and made something of a habitat home who wants to basically upgrade it with the understanding that she may at some point not recoup the upgrade in an economic sense when she first came into my office I said to her why are you doing this and you know maybe you should look at another house and you know we've had this discussion more than one time and she is committed to that community that neighborhood uh, she raised her kids there and she wants to raise her grandkids there uh, you know habitat does a wonderful job but quite frankly you know my client is now in a position where she can make a smaller home a bigger home and a more comfortable home uh, someone somewhere down the road will get a windfall if the board were to approve this because again this will be slightly larger than most habitat homes but that's a benefit it's not a detriment as far as the neighborhood if you've driven by there uh, you know we are abutting the Hamilton Street business district the adjacent property is not the most attractive shall I say uh, I do think that anything that uh, or, this will only be an improvement to the area as the board knows and has heard before anytime we you introduce either new structures or new additions to a neighborhood sometimes it helps other property owners do something to their property we've handled where we increase the impervious coverage and where we increase the uh, building coverage we handle the stormwater management so that it doesn't have a negative impact on on any of the adjoining properties I think the testimony is sufficient for the grant of the C variances that we're seeking and I thank you for your time and your attention. Okay. Any comments or motion? I'm in favor of this application, um, particularly as uh, revised by Mr. Lanford's uh, last uh, changes to the uh, footprint, and I uh, move its approval. So we're second. Second. Got any questions? Or are we putting hmm? the condition to keeping it as that's saying you uh, make sure that it stayed as you had an issue addendum to the deed clarifying that it will remain low income yeah okay uh, there should be that was a condition it was the color credit I think was the word oh, well I th maintains I think the color credit well I think that if it's maintained as a low income, we've, I think we've addressed that basically yeah. because if, if there is a limit as to what it's ultimately going to be sold for, somebody may get a windfall, but there's going to be a limit on the income. 
Okay. If, if I could, the, the suggestion that I had made was that there be a, an addendum to the deed clarifying that it's low, because again, there's some language in there that says low mod, but uh, it, it, my understanding it's a low income unit, and then clarifying that the income certification, at the time of the resale, that the income certification uh, would be done by the township's administrative agent, again, because the deed restriction doesn't say who does that. So it's two clarifying matters in the deed. Well, I accept that amendment to my motion. Okay. Any other discussion? <coughs> All more? Ms. Grauman? Yes. Mr. McCracken? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Gallo? Yes. Chairman Thomas? All right. I'm going to vote yes. I had initial reservations, and I'm, but I'm comfortable with it. I have to, I do admire your client's commitment to the community in the neighborhood. I think that deserves some consideration, even though maybe you would tell me legally it doesn't fit in. I think it does ethically, but good luck with that. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Simply Yoga, ZBA 140018, use variance and site plan in which the applicant is proposing a yoga studio and a single family dwelling at 24 Sycamore Place. Kingston, block 5.02, lot 152.04, and an R20 zone. start uh, thinking while you're preparing uh, we might need to set some ground rules because I don't think you have all your witnesses uh, I, I will go into what I'm going to be doing and figuring out how far we're going to get this evening you, you mean we'll negotiate what you're going no 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 not, not at all I I always defer to the board uh, first of all good evening members of the board mr. chairman Peter Lanford appearing on behalf of the applicant this is an application for a use variance for a yoga studio located on block 5.02 uh, in uh, lot 152.04 on a site containing 3.7 acres in the R20 zone. We are here for a use variance and site plan approval. The use variance is for the yoga studio. Uh, because it is a use variance, we will need five votes, affirmative votes, for the use variance. The single family house that we're proposing is a permitted use in the zone, uh, and we would also be seeking site plan approval. I do have, not all here this evening, because I didn't think we would get through it all this evening, I will have a total of five witnesses to present. I will give you, I will tell you who they are. So members of the public if they have certain questions uh, they can save them for the appropriate witnesses I do have first of all the architect uh, who is dealing with the both the existing dwelling on the property now and the proposed renovations and the new dwelling I will have the owner of the property and the owner of the yoga studio testifying I will have mr. Ardman who is the site engineer testifying uh, they are all here this evening. I don't even think we will get to all three of their testimonies this evening. I do have a traffic consultant, Ms. Dolan, who is not here this evening, and I have a professional planner, Mr. O'Brien, who will also be testifying. Uh, I also am aware that uh, at least one of the adjoining property owners is represented by counsel, Mr. Muller, who is here this evening. I've had conversations with him, so I'm sure he will be questioning witnesses. I am also aware that you only have six members here this evening, even though I'm entitled to seven members. Hopefully, between now and the next hearing, uh, whoever is missing will have the opportunity to listen to the tape or view the video of the hearing tonight so that at some point in time there will be seven members who can vote on this application. So, Mr. Thomas, now as far as what ground rules you want. I think we can, be, we can see how it goes and be flexible, but maybe not 
anticipate any new witnesses after 10 o'clock. We'll see how that. Yeah. And that, that's, that's fine. We're, we're going to have to come back at least one more time. Uh, I know that. And uh, again, if the neighbors uh, have a lot of questions, you know, it, it may be that we only do get through one witness. But we'll do, what, do our best. OK, you're on. But before we start, that's the, their place so the board can see them, but the residents can't. And can you ask that you either realign those or perhaps even move them over here? And then that way the board can see them as well as the public. Now, typically, we almost by habit we set up over there, but I think today it might be better. Yeah. Side. You're going to keep Mr. Dominic in the dark. That's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have an excuse now. I can't see Pete though. <laughs> Again, oh well. <laughs> I barely see you. No, no, no. Mr. Chairman, I've marked five exhibits, uh, actually six exhibits. Six, there's a set of photographs which I will be handing out, uh, which will be testified to by my first witness, Mr. Wilkes. Okay. Solemnly swear or affirm, tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. State and spell your last name. Kevin Wilkes, W I L K E S. Thanks. Mr. Wilkes, what is your occupation? I'm an architect. Okay, and can you give the board the benefit of your educational and professional background? Sure. Um, I'm the a principal and owner of uh, Princeton Design Guild, a design build firm. Uh, we've been in business for 30 years. I have an undergraduate degree in architecture from Princeton, my master's from Yale, and I taught at New Jersey Institute of Technology from 1986 until 2004, both construction and design. That's fine. Did I miss the magic words? He has something that's mundane and has a license. I do, in fact, have a license to practice architecture in the state of New Jersey. Okay. And Mr. Wilkes, do you have any experience or, back or background in dealing with historical residences and historical structures? Yes, I've been working on historical residences since uh, in Westfield, New Jersey, in the 1970s. Okay. And can you describe the subject property or the dwelling on the subject property at the present time? Uh, there's an existing home on 24 Sycamore Place um, that I believe to be a Sears Craftsman kit home from the 1930s. Uh, and uh, it underwent uh, stay, uh, remodeling in 1999, uh, which was partially commenced and not completed. And what in, what other structures are on the property? There's, there's also a, uh, a garage uh, close to the house at the end of the driveway, detached. And there is a separate barn uh, a little farther to the rear and off to the east, um, a gambrel-style barn with a little uh, shed addition on one side of it. Okay. Can you descri describe the condition of the existing dwelling? Uh, the existing dwelling was in extremely poor shape when uh, we first saw it uh, late summer. 
Um, as I mentioned, uh, a permit was pulled in 1999 to remodel it. And basically, the strategy of the previous owner was to build a new dwelling around the existing dwelling with a new roof on top and new exterior walls around it. And he got about 30% of the way through the project and then came to a halt. And uh, it doesn't appear much happened in, since the late 90s when the project was commenced. Okay, and now I'm out of turn a little bit, but I've marked a series of photographs as A6, and these are photographs of both the interior and exterior of the existing home, and there's also some photographs of the outbuildings. Correct. Okay. And these are the same multiple copies, so you guys can pass them down. Okay, I will pass them to the board members so that you can take the board members through the house. Let me take one. A6. That's what you said, right? A6. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Thanks. Thank you. you know, for a guy that wants seven board members, you're a little short on the on the photographs. We'll, 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 <laughs> we'll share. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you mine when I'm. No, it's I'm, all right. I just want to walk right. through. We're trying to cut down. No problem. Mr. Wilkes, can you, can you please take the board through the photographs so they have an understanding of what's there today and what's been done? Sure, yes, sir. The first page shows two photographs of the view from Sycamore Place, uh, looking at the house straight on and slightly off to the west uh, along the uh, side of the house. The bulk of the property exists to the right and to the rear. Uh, the house sits up uh, close to the street. Uh, the second page has photographs of the rear of the house. Um, the things that are in, you see, in black tar paper are the pieces that the past owner started and built as part of the renovation of the building. The things you see in white siding are the remnants of the original house that uh, were untouched, um, uh, ha had yet to be renovated. Uh, There's that, nothing but tar paper? Um, tar half of the house was nothing but tar paper, yes ma'am with some sticks nailed over. It was um, unsightly, to say the least. The next page shows you photographs from the side yard, uh, the driveways in the foreground in front of the house. Uh, next page, I move to interior shots. So you see the kitchen um, and uh, the rec room on the subsequent page. And then a page that actually shows the uh, little stairs up to the attic and a photograph of the old house roof that's sitting inside the new house roof. And we're climbing through a window to try to get out of one into the other. And then the next page are some shots of the outbuildings. The top shot is looking from Sycamore. You see the Gamble barn to the right, the garage to the left, and the photograph underneath it, I've rotated around to the side yard and taking a photograph. Uh, and finally, at the very end, uh, is photographs of uh, we've cleaned up the property, removed the um, uh, interiors, and removed a lot of the debris, all the debris, all the <coughs> overgrown shrubbery. Uh, we've actually peeled off the aluminum siding. Uh, that's the original wood siding you see on the last page and the original trim, uh, all of which we're actually planning to restore. Now, the work that you have done to the property since uh, the applicant acquired the property uh, was based on the permit that was issued many years ago to the original owner, correct? Correct. Once our client purchased the property, we were notified by Franklin Township there was an open permit on the property, and we met with the construction officials and the inspectors came out to the property, performed inspections, and gave us the go-ahead to clear up the unsafe conditions and uh, do the demolition and basically to get the building weathered in. Now, so so did you did you remove the let's call it the new house that was surrounding the old house? The other way around. I removed the old house that was still tucked inside of the new oh, house. Oh, okay, all right. So uh, essentially, where we're headed is to 
in a sense, continue the project that the previous owner started and complete the shell of the house he proposed while keeping the basement of the original home and effectively, really, the footprint exactly as he outlined and got it approved back in 99. Okay. As of this date, have you done anything to any of the outbuildings? Uh, other than clean them up and remove the debris, uh, we have not. We propose to demolish the small single uh, car garage at the end of the driveway. We propose to keep the Gamble barn, but to remove the little shed addition that's leaning onto the one side on the west. Okay. Now, you, you have certain exhibits that I have marked A1 through uh, A5. Uh, yeah, P -P yes. Maybe just for the record, we also want to note that because we knew that this wasn't going to finish tonight, the applicant is going to the Historic Commission in a, in a couple weeks to seek the Historic Commission approval, and that report will be provided at the Zoning Board's next meeting. That, that is correct. I think the Historic Commission meets is it next week or the week after? I January 20th. 20th, 20th I believe. 20th, okay. All right. M Mr. <coughs> Wilkes, can you take us through what the proposal is with respect to our client's intended use? And as you're talking through the boards, uh, can you refer to the exhibit numbers that I have put on the board so that uh, the record is pretty clear? Yes, sir. So uh, let me first talk about what's labeled A3. A3 is the floor plan of the proposed yoga studio, which is the existing building that's in place today, the same footprint. Uh, so we would take the front part of the building, uh, the, f the forward, let's call it three quarters, and it would be one large open space. Uh, no walls, no divisions. The uh, entry from the parking would actually be in the back. You wouldn't see this from the street. We'll actually keep the original porch. We're going to redo the railings and redo the columns, but keep the front porch concept intact, keep that footprint. So the look facing Sycamore will remain the same. The entrance to the studio will actually be from the back. We'll have both a handicap ramp and we'll have a stair entry into a little vestibule. Off the vestibule will be two bathrooms, a staircase on the first floor that will take you up to <coughs> a small loft, 150 square foot, one room on the uh, floor above on the second floor, or it will also take you down to the basement below. Uh, and that's effectively it. There's just one large room, two bathrooms, an entry vestibule, and the office loft up on the... So I'm looking at my pictures. Yes. And I'm having a hard time conceptualizing what's going to happen based upon the drawings. But is this the basically going to be the space for the yoga studio? So this corner is the rear of the building. Right. And these corner porch columns are these corner porch columns right here in plan. Yep. Or right here in the rear elevation. So... In fact, that, that column you see is the one you see leading in the photograph. And we're, if you look in through the bulk of the building, you know, actually, all of this is open today. Yeah. But the rooms will be to the back, and then the large open space will be the, the front portion. So the view you're looking at is going right like that. Today. Okay, so the answer to my question is no. Because what I'm looking at here is the back, not the front. Yes, sir, that's correct. Do you have a, is one, any of your pictures... Show me the front. Isn't this the front? The, yeah, but the, I'm trying to get an idea of what's going on inside. And I don't have anything for that, right? I don't have any interior photos of the front. Okay. No, sir. All right. Just ask it. It's actually all been removed and gutted. So. so here's the basement plan. This is the existing basement. No modifications uh, other than a new staircase, which we're, the, the previous staircase was super steep and not safe. So we're redoing the stairs, and we'll use the basement for utilities and equipment like the original house had yeah. with its basement. All right. So the that's A6. Uh, A3, excuse okay. me. Okay, Mr. Wilkes, staying on A3 and the proposal for the yoga studio. The <coughs> basement itself is not going to be habitable or usable space. It will be merely for mechanicals and or storage. Is that correct? Correct. It, okay. Right. The upper level, the loft, is strictly for office use 
And storage, yes. And storage. And then there are restrooms on the first floor, is that correct? That is correct. And the rest of it's an open area? That is correct. There are no locker rooms, shower rooms, changing rooms, or other facilities of that nature on the property? None of the above. And, okay. and, how, and how, many, how many yoga mats can fit into the big open space? You're so me again. We well, you did it to me before. <laughs> We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven by three rows. So we have thirty-three. Okay. And that was on your plan. That was laid out, and that's the mac maximum right. occupancy for the uh, participants in a class. Is that correct? That's correct, and okay. that's super tight. Okay. That's sardine class. Okay. Uh, proceed on to your other exhibit so you can indicate to the board what the building will look like exteriorly, how you're going to treat the building. So these are the uh, A4 is our elevation drawing of the outside <coughs> four elevations of the existing principal building, which would be the studio. Um, in large part, we are going to, it's not fair to say restore because the roof is a different right. roof and a different slope. But nonetheless, we're going to pick up the details that we've uncovered of the original house with the horizontal clabbered siding at a seven inch exposure, five quarter by four square casing around the double hung sashes. And we're going to um, really recreate that, keep the front door exactly where it is, the porch. This porch is again the new porch that jumped over the old little porch. Uh, but we'll finish the siding all the way up the building. Uh, we'll leave the existing siding to the extent we can. It's actually been covered by aluminum since I think the 70s. Um, and other than nail splits, which we can repair, it's not in terrible shape. So this whole <coughs> section here would be original. Now this is a new piece that the previous owner added, so that would have new siding. Uh, but we come back around uh, to the rear porch, which will have the entry into the studio. And here's the rear drawing showing the steps up to a small window here where the bathroom is and a large window here where this entry vestibule is. And then coming around to the side yard of the house again, we'll just continue the existing detailing um, and uh, fill this in with new siding to match the old. Come back around to our, here's the side of the front porch, not front of the house. No, excuse me, I'm turned around. Here's the side of the, no, I was right. That's the front porch right there. And here's the side of the front porch right there. So we'll continue that railing. And we'll match the previous railing that existed on the dwelling. Um, the roof is actually one thing the previous person did and got it up and sealed, thank goodness. Really prevented the building from getting destroyed. There were a bunch of leaks inside, but there was more actual animal infestation problems than water problems in the building. Um, so we're going to actually leave the roof alone and the shingles and everything that's in place today we will leave intact. It is a shingle roof? It's an asphalt shingle roof. Okay. Can you indicate to the board the materials that you will be using around the exterior of the building and basically the colors? Sure. So we'll look at A1 and A2. Uh, which one's A1 and which one's A2? A1 is on the left. Okay. Uh, and this is showing the view from the rear, from where you would park and right. walk into the studio. And A2 is showing you the view from on Sycamore, roughly at the corner of the property, where you'll see the existing building, the uh, porch. We're going to put a, a little more gentle set of steps up than exists today. And uh, the building running along. And then in the back is the dwelling we propose at the rear of the property. And here is the barn that we're keeping. So the materials will be uh, white trim, soft, either light gray or light blue uh, siding color. And um, uh, we'll have the numbers on the back of the building. And we're going to match, we're going to replace, but match the double hung sashes that exist on the building and keep the window styles identical. There are there's single pane windows with storms. We're going to take the storms off and put in new insulated glass sash units and match the two over uh, one detailing that they have in place. Now, in addition to that, the restoration of the existing dwelling, uh, is there anything planned for the barn? 
Uh, yes. Uh, we don't have a drawing of the barn. We don't really plan to make any exterior changes other than the demolition of the little lean-to shed on the west side of it. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to clean it up, repair it, and uh, the clients intend to use it for storage of their items and things. Cause okay. And it'll be painted or? Yes. Okay. It'll be painted and cleaned up and look like the main barn. In, in addition to that, we are also proposing a residential dwelling for one of the owners of the studio to the rear of the property. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. And that is shown on Exhibit A5. A5. All right. Can you take the board through the size of the house, what's in the house, what's outside the house? You sort of heard the drill in the previous application, <laughs> so you can make us throw it. Sure. Uh, dwelling toward the rear of the property is a two-bedroom house of um, 1,742 square feet total, both floors. Uh, on the ground level, there is a little entry vestibule and a powder room and a study, and then kitchen, dining, living in an open area in the back with windows and the door, French doors out to the back of the house. Then there are stairs that go up to the second floor to a center hallway. There's a bedroom at either end with a bathroom for each bedroom, and then a laundry, laundry at the head of the stairs right there. Uh, outside, we're going to match the detailing of this dwelling to the detailing of the front building, so we'll have the same siding at the same 7-inch exposure, the same window trim. We'll have a little porch across the part that faces Sycamore, and um, we'll have a pair of French doors coming out the back, and uh, little windows on the second floor, small windows on the side, and larger windows facing the street in the rear. Okay, and obviously this, the site engineer will testify in greater detail, <coughs> but the location of the dwelling, uh, where does it sit in relation to the existing dwelling? It sits uh, to the rear or to the north or backing up to the property line that abuts Trap Rock. Okay, and, and in between, as we will see in the other exhibits, is the parking lot. So it'll be the studio, the parking lot, and then the house. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I have no further questions of this witness. I got a couple. Uh, I'm looking at the, the plan here, and when I look at this, it looks like the piece <coughs> of property is like a, almost like a flag. Or like it's like a, it goes, does it go all the way up to the right or does? Yes, it's a large L-shaped parcel. So Richard James Gahey is the same, the same person? He was the seller to our client for whom we're representing here tonight. Okay, so, so that in the, in the entity you're representing here tonight is Simply Yoga? Yes, sir. Okay, so Simply Yoga will own this not a flag but it's it's like a it's a it's an angular it's an L, sh L shaped parcel okay. that it's not a flag because it has sufficient frontage right exactly but right. it does otherwise yep. have similarities because it has that tail that falls behind I think three other parcels okay what are you going to do not you of course but what the what's the plan for the the property to the rear of these other houses that are on on Sycamore, nothing. Nothing. Mm, is can we get? Would they be willing to to stipulate to some extent as to as the, to that idea? Yeah, we can talk about it, but yes, the general okay. answer is yes. All right. Any other questions? There was one other point I wanted to just give you the square footage of the studio building. I don't think I mentioned that in my testimony. The size of the existing home pre-renovation was 1,222 square feet. The size of the studio as we proposed to complete the approved renovation would make it 1,384 square feet. And upstairs in that little loft space office, we have 149 square feet for a total of the building of 1,533. Any other questions? One, one question. Is 
Sure. Is the architect or the engineer going to talk about the signage? Engineer. It, it, the engineer will. Uh, what is the ceiling height in the basement? About six feet, six inches. Okay. And you spoke about the number of yoga mats that could fit in the studio. Is there a separate max occupancy number that the fire marshal would set? Uh, we would actually post it at that 33 number. Okay. You would post it at the 33 number... <coughs> But I assume that there would be an instructor or employees. The instructor would use one of those mats, okay. so we. Imagine so the limit is total 33, 33 period. Well, let, let, let me let me clarify that. The, the, you'll get an occupancy number that may be higher than that, but if the board chose to approve this, they would approve a condition on being no more than X amount of people. The the 33 because they're not gonna. The construction department's not going to say 33. They're going to do it on whatever calculation they do it. and But that would be superseded by, if the board chose to approve it, by the limit that, that 33 or whatever. That, that wouldn't there also be an issue of uh, sewage capacity or water capacity? That yes, would, septic uh, tank capacity. Well, that, that's, that, that, this that, is that, that's, that's a whole separate issue. The health this, department. This is on public water and public sewer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there are no showers in the building. Yeah. They're just powder, just powder rooms. Yeah. The, the, this property, just for the record, is serviced uh, by South Brunswick, but it is on public sewer and it is on public, it, it has public water to it. Okay. Anything else? We, we will open the public for this <laughs> witness. This part of the hearing is for questions. On testimony that he's given. We're not listening, we're not hearing, we're looking for opinions, um, personal comments or anything, questions concerning the testimony. Uh, good evening, uh, board. Uh, my name is Jerry Jerns. I live at 55 Laurel Avenue in Kingston. I've been there 43 years. I just have one question. Um, did you uh, employ a uh, structural engineer to take a look at the interior of this house and whether or not the, the roof uh, with, without any interior walls or supports would safely support the roof? No, I did those calculations myself. And they're in compliance with uh, standard engineering practice? It's in fact safer today than it was before we went in and cut the old roof out because there was no collar ties, nothing to resist a rotational moment at the plate heel of the rafter tail. So we actually went in there the, with the construction official's permission and tied all that stuff together with rigid anchors and put collar ties in the building to make all of that much stiffer than Mr. Previous no, owner had left it. That's all. Any other questions for this witness testimony? Um, hello, my name is Kathy Pavlak. I uh, live at 35 Laurel Avenue, right on the corner. I have a couple of questions. Um, I was wondering when the photographs of the exterior of the house, when were they taken? They were taken at the point that we first visited the property, I'm going to guess August, September in there somewhere. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and um, and it's the, if the property isn't owned by Simply Yoga, is it? It's owned by the corporation 24 Sycamore Place LLC. Right. Not, is that not true? I'm sure that's really germane to his testimony. The architect. You probably ask that question to the next people that come up. Okay, the so that's part. wrong. Okay, right. All right, I'll ask that question the next time. And one thing about the, um, <coughs> you talked about how unsightly, you, you know, the property was and everything. And I was just wondering if you were aware if there had ever been any complaints from anybody in the uh, neighborhood about it. Uh, well, when we were working in this fall, we got a complaint from one neighbor who said trash had blown onto her lawn, and we sent laborers over. No, to check I mean, that if out. there were any people in the in the yeah. neighborhood who complained about the existing um, uh, a well, condition I, I of the house, ma'am, I, I, that's, really, that's really not a question for the 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 the, the, ar the architect. 
I mean, if you have a question regarding his, but, well, his testimony. Talk, yeah, but he talked about how unsightly it was. So I was just wondering. He, he's not going to have any knowledge of any complaints yeah, to, 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 to the, the township. I can, All right. I can tell you that we, from a code enforcement, had a couple people call, and one of the responses was is they contacted the owner of the property, and they made some fixes to the construction department, but they're not going to be able to tell you whether anyone contacted the township. Only we can. I can tell you we got several phone calls, which is why they went out and did some work inside the house, and they well, were actually made to do some work inside okay, the house. Okay. Okay. But I, I think but perhaps I'm not getting my point across. My point is that you made a point of how unsightly it was and, you know, and, and you're doing all of this you know, beautification. And I think my point that I'm trying to get across is that I don't think the neighborhood had an issue with the property to begin with. So that's why, you know, that's that's where in okay, this we're, context, we're, we got that that's where my from, question has come we're from. Kind of moving away from his specific testimony. You're, well, I don't, you're, I don't. What you're saying is you're certainly entitled to say under the comment section when we get to that. Well, but he brought up that it was, un, you know, he brought up the condition of the property, and that's why I'm asking well, the I question. Well, I think he brought it up point. from an architectural point of view, and the pictures that we see certainly would describe an unseemly half-built or half-torn down property. Right. Whether, you know, what you're getting at, we, we can get into in, a, in another part of the hearing. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Thank Any you very other much. people who have questions for the? Well, that was a question. I'm Meredith Rogers. I live at 17 Laurel Avenue. I'm also a fire commissioner, of fire district four in Kingston. My question is, oh, sorry. Hi, Meredith Rogers. I'm at 17 Laurel Avenue. I'm also a fire commissioner for Franklin Township Fire District four, which is Kingston. I'm not here in that capacity, but I'm for full disclosure. So. Can I just ask? Sure. Where is that in relation to the property? Um, I can s sort of see it from my back window. It's um, by the park, more closer to the park. So my question is about the the house, the second house you're going to be building. Yes. And you didn't really talk about the parking lot too much, but is that going to have a separate parking lot? Um, actually, I believe our engineer is going to testify okay. to the parking strategies. Okay. Thank I think the answer is yes. I don't want to hold out the suspense here, <laughs> but I don't, you know, I think we're prepared to speak to that uh, two witnesses from me. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any other people wish to ask the witness questions? <laughs> My name's uh, Jim Diaforley. Uh, 32 Sycamore Place, and for the record, we were the owner of the property uh, being discussed before the Gokies, just for... Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and, you know, very impressive in terms of what you've laid out here, um, as far as the design. I think what I want to try and do is get back, and it may not be all to you, back to you know, what I think we're here for. No, no, all this is time to do is to just ask questions. Okay, I'll ask this, questions. Okay, good. But we're talking about changing the use of the property. So can you talk a little bit more about the parking lot, that parking area? Okay. Now that may be something your engineer is going to get into. Yeah, I think I, I'm not so highly skilled change. at talking about parking lots, so I would rather okay. defer that's to my next esteemed witness or colleague. one of the next witnesses. Okay. Not to obfuscate, no but I just really, I do buildings. <laughs> Thank you, sir. My name is Al Russo. I'm at uh, 34 Sycamore. Um, just a question, architectural. Uh, have you already done the work to actually blow out the walls currently? We have done the demolition, yes, sir, Al. So currently, you have that open space we've for actually, a yoga studio? We've actually demolished the entire interior of the building. Okay. So proceeding as if it will be a yoga studio? No. No, we've just no. done demolition. We've not done any new construction. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Okay, then we'll close this part of it and move to the next witness. Yeah. 
if the board were not to grant the variance for the yoga studio, what would be the game plan for the dwelling, for the existing dwelling? Just continue ahead and turn it into a dwelling. I okay. mean, right now it's a sort of a blank slate. It's a shell. So you okay. can put inside the shell anything that fits in uh, 1,384 square feet. And, and so we are, in, and at this time we are doing no construction for the studio itself. All we're doing is demo work pursuant to the previously issued permit. That's exactly correct. And I'd maybe like to point out, uh, part of the goal of the design of the studio is to make it look residential and like a residence because that's its original condition. So we're not departing too far from anything that's residential design vocabulary. Okay. All right. Mr. Chairman, my next witness is actually the owner of the studio. And, and I know you, I got a feeling this is going to be rather lengthy. I don't know whether you want to start her testimony now or whether you want to defer it to the next meeting because I'm pretty certain we will not complete her testimony this evening. Uh, so that's, I'm going to leave that call up to well, you. I would like then to wait because I'd like to take the questions from the residents along with the testimony and not have a separation of a week or two in between. Or a month because I or think. Or whatever, yeah. a month. Okay, I, I would accept that suggestion not to start that. Okay. All right, then I, then I would ask that this matter then be carried to your February meeting, which is February 5th, 5th without further notice. Uh, at that time, I will have the applicant back. I will also have the architect come back in case there are any other questions that may uh, be of the architect. Mr. Ardman will be here as well as my planner and traffic consultant. Whether we get to them or not, I don't know, but everybody will be here at the next meeting. Okay, and for the benefit of anybody that might have missed that, we're not starting the next witness because it looks to be a lengthy testimony, probably also leading to lengthy questions. We want to take them all at the same time. You might hear, otherwise you might hear the testimony tonight and not be able to ask questions for a month. All right, so we'll, we'll do it all together. And what was the date again you were? That's okay with us? Fifth. Yes, February 5th. February 5th will resume the hearing. Thank you very much. All right, if there isn't any further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. And if I could just adjourn. inform the residents that the plans are on file in our office, so if you want to come in and take a look at the plans that are on file.